Hello developers and welcome back to Integration Ninjas. Today we have got an exciting topic to delve into code QL scanning from GitHub. What it is? It is like a, a powerful semantic code analysis engine developed by GitHub. It goes beyond the conventional static code analyzers by understanding the data flow and control flow of your code. This allows code QL to uncover hidden vulnerabilities and potential security risk in project. It is like available for all repositories on github.com and also it is available for private repositories owned by organizations that uses github enterprise cloud or github enterprise servers there you can directly use this you can see we can use this project like uh, scanning to find tries and prioritize fixes so this is required like uh, why we need this because in today's fast-paced development environment security is paramount Identifying and fixing security vulnerabilities early in development process can save you from headaches down the road and protect your users. In this video, we will cover everything you need to know about CodeQL, from what it is to how to integrate it seamlessly into your projects. Whether you are a seasoned developer looking to bolster your code, security practices, or a newcomer eager to learn the ropes, we have got you covered. But before we dive in, if you found this content valuable, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell and give us a thumbs up. It really helps us in bringing you more quality content. Alright, let's jump into the world of CodeQL and discover how to supercharge your code analysis game with GitHub's powerful tool. Let's get started. Whenever we run the scan of CodeQL, we can see the results here in the security section and the advanced security section and the code scanning tab here. Actually, I have already run for one of the scan here. We can see the tool as CodeQL on a particular branch, CodeQL scan. Uh, there we can see uh, one I have vulnerable endpoint for my project where I have created a new API actually. Let's see that what it is. I have created like one or two APIs uh, so if we if I want to try and run the scan on the same thing it won't show in the logs here but it will be available for my particular branch here you can see this here now this API is vulnerable how it is vulnerable so let's see let me start my project here in local we can see this so if we see yeah so this is the api endpoint like uh, whatever i am passing through the query param name is equal to integration ninjas it is working as expected but now what if i am just uh, passing some random script from this right so i have already set this in readme you can check that if i pass some random script also this will execute right this is like i just printed alert but suppose like if an attacker tries to like threaten your application and inject some malware script uh, into your application so it may break everything so you need to find this vulnerabilities as early as possible similarly i have different endpoint which is like related to command uh, execution so i have directly executed the command like whatever the re request is coming so i'm just uh, taking that user input i'm running the exec command this is not a good practice at all but just for this it is showing what are the files i have in my system i just printed the ls command or just you can print a echo hello it will print that that's fine probably you have like use it for different purpose but the attackers can like found this endpoint as vulnerable and they can like check everything and they can execute any command on the application server so this is not a good practice at all so i have just created this uh, vulnerability here let's see if it is code ql is picking this or not let's see and run this in our code okay so for this what we can do we need to go to settings and the uh, code security and analysis section in the security and we need to select the code scanning and we need to select the code's ql analysis and there we can set up in the two ways default is only for the main and the protected branches and it runs on a weekly schedule we can edit this okay but i want to run some advanced configuration i want to 
have a workflow file where I can customize things on which branch I want to run okay this is for main branch I want to execute on the uh, code ql scan branch so I can just do that also now this is for code ql scan branch so by default this workflow is like applicable we don't need any change to make in this workflow file it will work as it is without any issue but we can customize few things since we have changes changed our branch here code ql scan so this will execute on push to my this branch and uh, whenever someone creates pull request on code ql scan branch that time i will remove the schedule i don't need and there is analyze job which is like uh, setting up the runner here if the language is swift then it is trying to use the mac runner otherwise it is using the ubuntu latest runner okay and it has like timeout minutes and the permissions that is required to run the scan like security events right and the action and contents is read permissions and they have we have defined the metrics as uh, javascript and typescript here now we are doing the checking out the code and initializing the code ql so this is the action provided by github code ql initialization action so this will initialize the like uh, the code ql with the required tools and configuration we have just uh, defined the language which is matrix language that will be the javascript or typescript here and uh, now this will try to automatically build the our project if you can see automatically attempts to build any compile language language c plus plus java c has go java shift anything so if you have some customized configuration then you don't need this action you can just uh, execute the command to build your project the build is necessary to we need to build the project before running this code ql uh, analyze uh, scan here so this will automatically build the project we don't need to run npm run build or anything this is one thing here and after that it performs the code ql analysis here for that the analyze uh, action is there and uh, we have to define the category with language the javascript typescript here so that's it we need to run this and see what will happen so i'm just uh, committing in my branch here and we'll see what will be triggered here we can see the one action has been triggered create code ql.yml with this message and we can see the matrix analyze it is started here so we can see the steps has been executing the checking out the code initialize code ql so initialize code ql is completed for this compiled language javascript and they have loaded the extractor and the code ql database everything and auto build is also completed okay and the code ql analysis is in progress we can see here all right so these logs are from the code ql tool they have like loaded the code ql tool and running it in our current directory so these are the logs from that tool we can see like uh, what are things has been performed here perform code ql analysis yeah so these are the logs from the code ql and now we can see like uh, the results in the code ql the scanning section here in the code scanning tab we can see and select our branch code ql scan and we can see like too many issues has been reported some critical and high vulnerability issues and some medium also so let's see like uh, what are the i have like we have created like this input like uh, and one was there for that scripting so here we can see the missing rate limiting one so this is a vulnerable endpoint to command injection so it shows like uh, this route handler performs a system command but this is not rate limited because we are directly executing the command here so for this like uh, should not perform expensive operations such as accessing the file system executing an operating system command or interacting with the database 
without limiting the rate at which requests are accepted so they have recommend a few things also like what we can do we need to validate the path also and all those things we need to the remediation is also provided similarly this is a critical also uncontrolled command line uh, code that passes the untrued user input directly to the child process.exec or similar api that executes shell commands allow the user to execute malicious code that's what i was trying to say like uh, this is just a ls command what if like uh, uh, they have like uh, exp like trying to fetch all our system information ip address and everything and they inject uh, vulnerabilities in our system so this is not a good practice at all actually so these are the things that like, you can find in the code scanning tab and we have this exception text uh, yeah we can see this as well like uh, directly writing error messages to uh, okay so this is also an asset uh, not a good practice at all so yeah these are the things we need to like uh, we better like uh, if attacker like threatens our application we want to like uh, find this security vulnerabilities and issues right when we are developing our code and testing our code itself then in that phase only that's why the code ql scanning is necessary so that's it like uh, that's why it is a game changer when it comes to security by incorporating it into your development process you are taking a proactive steps toward creating robust and secure software if you found this video insightful and learn something new today don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow developers and hit that subscribe button Subscribing not only keeps you updated with the latest content, but also supports the channel in bringing you more valuable content. Remember, the world of technology is dynamic and staying ahead in terms of security is crucial. If you have any questions or topics you would like us to cover in future videos, drop them in the comments below. I will be hanging around to help you out. Thanks for joining us on CodeQL Journey and happy coding. Thank you.